what's up my free melon family thank you very very much for joining me back here on the free melon society i'm eli martyr today we're going to be doing something a little bit different something that i i don't think i've ever done before yeah no i don't think i've ever done this before so I'm going to take you with me to the gym and we're going to go through a high intensity workout today. All right. So I'm going to bring my camera inside and record all the exercises that I'm doing for these short but outrageously intense little workouts. Okay. Right now I'll just very quickly and briefly summarize the actual approach to conducting a high intensity exercise session. Okay. What we're trying to do is we're trying to work out in such a way that sends the correct trigger signal to your body for growth, okay? That's what we're trying to do. And the way to go about creating that hormonal signal in your body for growth is intensity. When a muscle is getting close to failure during a set, you have to recruit more and more and more and more and more muscle fibers in order to try to overcome the load that you're exercising with. And when that completely fails and your muscle just completely fails, that's very threatening physiologically speaking that's very threatening and so your body doesn't want to undergo that feeling of failure because that's a vulnerability and so that failure paired with the maximal intensity that you're exerting is what will create the correct signal for increased strength and growth okay with these high intensity workouts you only do one absolutely crushingly difficult set one set to all three levels of failure and i'll describe what i mean by that so you are going to do only do one set of each exercise you might do anywhere from six to ten exercises in one workout but that's it you would only do one set and then immediately move on to the next exercise, trying to rest for as minimal a time as possible in between exercises. How long would you have to recover after a workout like this? Anywhere from a week to 10 days or more, depending on the person. It would depend on the person, but anywhere from a week uh, or, or more. We'll go through the cadence and everything when I'm in the gym and I'll just do like a voiceover and then we'll walk you through that once we're actually in there. If you're normally accustomed to working out for strength and putting in maximal effort, you're gonna have to drop your weight down a little bit to accommodate the very slow and controlled pace that we're moving at in the high intensity workout. One thing I will say, is that when you do these workouts, using machines is quite helpful because you're looking at completely isolating each muscle that you're trying to work for the workout. You have to eliminate your ego from the game. What you're trying to do is you're trying to exhaust the muscle as efficiently as possible. Anyway, I think the rest I can do with a voiceover, so let's just not waste any more time and get to the gym. So just some general housekeeping before we get going, I am going to be giving lectures at the Tanglewood Fruit Fest this February, March 23rd to March 1st, 2024. Oh, I am so excited to head down there. I'm really, really thankful and honored that I was invited to go and speak at the festival. And yeah, it's gonna be a great time. So if, if you would like to come to the Tanglewood Fruit Festival, hang out with myself and all the wonderful people that are gonna be there, then you can get a discount from your tickets if you follow the link that's in the description in this video. Follow the link and you'll be taken to the Tanglewood Fruit Festival site. And then from there, when you check out, you can input my discount code, which is MELON24. I'll write that in the description as well, so there's no mistake. So just take that code and input it into the discount or coupon field on the site, and you'll get a 10% discount. So anyway, I can't be more excited. And if you can make it, oh man, I'd love to see you. Okay, here we go. So first up on the workout schedule is squats. Right, we're using a squat machine and we're using a squat machine because it's all about safety right? when you're working out to absolute failure like we are going to be in this set of exercises you're going to want to do it with a machine because the free weights can be dangerous especially if you're using exercises that require spotters or whatnot with the machines you don't need a spotter 
Okay, so notice the cadence, very, very slow, very slow and controlled. No cheating, no momentum to interfere with the effort that your muscles have to exert, okay? So no cheating. You'll see that I'm not locking out at the top of the movement either, right? Yeah, definitely getting tired. No, there's no locking out and I'm not going all the way down. That's because you don't need to go full, full range. You only want to keep the exercise moving at the ranges that produce the most difficulty for your muscles, okay? Oh, yeah, excruciating. Right? You're gonna feel a burn. Okay, moving through these constant tension. So there's not one moment of your set that should relent on the on the tension that your muscles are generating. Okay, it's coming up soon. I'm gonna hit a point here, a point that I'm calling the critical point where I encounter the first level of fatigue. All right, it's coming up soon. Oh, squeezing through that last rep. Okay, there it is. Boom, the critical zone. All right, now let's spend a second here talking about this critical zone. This is the part of the exercise that it's all about. The whole set was almost like a formality just to get you to this point, all right, where your muscles have gone through enough slow, rhythmic, unbroken tension where they now are starting to fail. So to do these workouts properly, you want to go through all three levels of fatigue. Concentric failure, isometric failure, and eccentric failure. Let's quickly go through them. Concentric is when you are flexing and overcoming the weight of the resistance. An isometric is when there is no change in the muscle length and the load or the resistance is, is being held unmoving, okay? So the muscle is working, there's tension in the muscle, but the load is not moving in any direction. We're just using muscular force to maintain the weight of the load. Isometric and eccentric is when the load is being lowered by the muscle. So when you have concentric failure, it means that you can't lift the load anymore. And that is the level of failure that you see me entering into right here when we get into what I'm calling the critical zone. So pay attention as we go through these exercises. What you'll see is that through each exercise, I'm going through all three levels of failure. Notice that so that when you go and do these at the gym, you're doing these properly and that you are actually working out to failure, which is extremely uncomfortable, which is why not many people do this. No, not many people work out like this. Okay, here we go. We're in the critical zone. All right. Oh, straining, straining, straining. And failure. Okay, so I held it. So we got to the isometric phase. Still trying to power through and lift that weight. And then at some point, you can't even hold the isometric. And then your, your muscles just fail into an eccentric portion of the lift. And then the exercise is done. Okay. All right, so here we're moving on to dips. No weight on these ones, just body weight dips. These dips are made a lot more difficult because of the cadence that you're using. So if you regularly use weight, you might want to drop the weights, but like lower the weight that you're using or just get rid of the weights completely. I mentioned the stopwatch. Okay, so you've got your stopwatch and you're going to have your little notebook and you want to record how many reps you do in a set, and you also want to record your time under tension. You want to be working out for at least 90 seconds. That would be a good target to reach. If you can't make 90 seconds, it means you need to lower the weight. Okay, now again, you'll notice I'm not locking out at the top completely, all right? Actually, I should probably be straightening or extending my arms maybe even a little bit less here but there's no lockout because I want to keep the tension I don't want any moment where the tension lets up it's constant tension and a lot of the time when we work out we look for tiny little breaks 
in the movement, but you're not allowed to do that. Okay, you can see how difficult this is. I'm probably about to fail here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Critical zone, there's the isometric, okay? And the isometric will fail, eccentric, and done. Okay. So, yeah, you can see, <laughs> you can see how, how tiring this is. Okay, so we got the bicep machine here. This one was a really, really, really good set. And you'll see here. You'll see here why. Okay. Notice the cadence, of course. Slow up. Slow down. One note. Very important. Very important to mention when you do this. When you get to concentric failure and you're no longer able to lift the load anymore and you get into the isometric portion, do not simply with your intention try to hold the weight in place during the isometric. You are trying to actively contract the load all the way up, all right? You are not simply trying to hold it in place. You are trying to power through the isometric and succeed in your full contraction. Okay, we're in the critical zone now, right? I'm in that isometric, but I'm trying to lift the weight. I'm not just holding it there. I'm actually trying to, to power through the whole thing. Oh my God, it's excruciating. You can see my legs twitching. Your, your nervous system will be going nuts. And then the eccentric failure and done. Okay, ridiculous. There's a reason not many people work out like this at the gym. Because it's excruciatingly difficult. But you only do one set. Okay? So you save a lot of time. Okay, we're jumping onto the Roman chair here and I've got a weight between my legs and we're gonna just be doing some slow controlled knee ups with a weight and we'll do that until we cannot do any more. The rest time between exercises is as close to zero as possible. So you'll need some time, you'll need a minute or so to jump to the next machine or whatever. say I mean there are more enjoyable feelings than oh, oh god critical zone okay here we go there's that isometric my concentric has failed trying to push through trying to push through oh, I can't even do that anymore and the weight falls okay. 
oh yeah it's just I mean these these are so so difficult you you you, you really should try try out this type of exercise at some point One note, guys, about that critical zone. Now, I, I mentioned it earlier that it's the most important part of the exercise. Okay, By far the most important part where you've entered into that first level of failure. You are going to be struggling, struggling against your failing muscles. And that experience is, is very frightening for your nervous system. So the reason that that critical zone is the most important part of this is because that's when the hormonal sig that's the condition necessary for the for the correct hormonal signals to be released to trigger growth or or strength gains okay that's why it's so important So you need to be in that panicked state where a load or a resistance is trying to be lifted, but your whole body is freaking out because it can't. So your body needs to, to feel that and to feel that it's completely failed, right? So 100, 110% effort and it needs to feel that so that the signal for adaptation can be released. These are shoulder blade push-ups, okay? Ooh, gosh. Ooh, yeah, yeah. These are shoulder blade push-ups, so locked arms, and you're just moving up and down with your shoulder blades. There we are in the critical zone, trying to push through, push through, push through. It's hard to see what I'm doing because there's not much range to play with here, but just trying to do like a, a, a shrug, basically. And always, 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 have a stopwatch with you of some sort and record your time. Time under tension, so how long you were able to maintain active work, whoa, active work on the muscles. So that next time you go to the gym, uh, seven days later, 10 days later, whatever it is, to do this same workout. You have your logbook there so you can try to improve in some capacity. Even if it's one tenth more range on a contraction, that's improvement. Okay. Um, I wasn't going to do shrugs today. It, it, because I'm not, I'm not using straps. I, I probably need to get straps if I want to truly exhaust my traps. But the problem with doing these, uh, these shrugs for this type of workout is that your grip strength starts to give out really before your traps are truly, truly done. But still, eh, still pretty close. Still pretty close, but as you can see, this wasn't as complete an exercise as the other ones. There was a little bit of juice left in those traps. It's the grip strength that was kind of the limiting factor there. And we're going to do some rear, rear deltoids. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention, this is my B routine. So I've got my A routine, which is more of the kind of compound lifts, like the traditional lifts, uh, bench press, shoulder press, row, classic, classic row, 
classic pull down. Okay, so I've got all that on the A routine, and then I've got legs and uh, these other exercises on the B routine. There's also a C routine, but hey, we don't need to get into that. So, yeah, as you can see, just moving through this, slow and controlled, slow and controlled, constant tension. Uh oh, there's that critical zone. Uh, this. Oh gosh. Yeah. Um, actually, it wasn't as clear this time where I had that nice isometric. for a couple seconds. I, I, you didn't see that in this last exercise because I gave everything that I had on the concentric tr contraction. And there was, yeah, there was just nothing left. And so all I had left was an eccentric failure. Cool, that's it. That's the workout, right? In and out of the gym, efficient as hell. Okay, what more do you want? <sighs> okay, so that's it for the workout. As you can see, those hip workouts are absolutely, they're crushingly difficult. You only do those maybe once a week. As you saw, it was only one set per exercise, okay? So just one unbelievably crushing, crushingly hard set till absolute failure beyond failure, okay? So you go through all three levels of failure on each exercise and just one just one set that's it so looking forward to getting home now and having apples i think it is on the menu today yeah so all right guys when is bring motor breath the cardiovascular work that you get in when you work out like this is incredible it's 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 some of the most rigorously challenging cardiovascular work that you could ever do and you don't need to do long duration cardio in order to get that benefit, right? So yeah, super, super, super difficult and highly recommended. So yeah, give that style of exercise a shot and yeah, let me know how it goes. Holy moly, those workouts are no joke. Let's head off home and we will grab dinner or in our case, the first meal of the day. <laughs> okay, so I'm here at home after that crushingly difficult workout. I actually wasn't planning on shooting anything after I left the gym, but I figured, all right, well, if I'm gonna be heading home and eating, why don't I just bring the camera along and you can see what I'm eating after a workout like that. So there are always questions floating around. What is the best post-workout meal? Eli, what would you eat post-workout? What would you eat pre-workout? Does what you eat change at all? when you're doing exercise or whatnot. Anyway, so there's a bunch of those questions that I'm sure people might have. And my answer to all of it is my diet doesn't change at all, virtually at all. It's about five o'clock right now. Okay, in two days, in 48 hours, all I've had is two liters of apple juice. I'm gonna have some solid food <laughs> uh, for, for dinner tonight, but I've also got some more apple juice, excuse me. Does what I eat change at all because of a workout? No, it doesn't. No, well, nobody, nobody should be worrying about any kind of protein anything or post-recovery anything, and ideally you would never be worrying about these things. Today I'm gonna be eating brutally simply, as I usually try to do, and yeah, that's it. That's that's the end of the story, I, th I think. I'll show you what I'm, what I'm drinking. Okay, so we've got here a mason jar full of apple juice, and that's gonna be first up. After we're done with this, then I'll wait a little bit and then, well, why don't I take you downstairs and show you what I've got cooking up today. Uh, I'm actually trying something new out today and you're gonna follow me down to the kitchen and see what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go. Okay, back downstairs in the kitchen. These things look so interesting. I, I can't wait to try these. So I'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at here. I'm just gonna un wrap the saran wrap here and okay here turn this around so so it's all about apples today i found some some dehydrated apples apple rings at the store at the health food store 
I realized I've never really tried soaked dehydrated or re-soaked dehydrated apples. So we're, we're gonna give it a shot today. Uh, so it's all about the apples. I, I'll start with this with this apple juice that I, that I pressed for myself at home. And then we, we've just got a whole bunch of other fresh apples to eat with these. I don't have a chance in hell of eating everything here. I'll just eat as much as I want to feel satisfied. Yeah, yeah, it's everything. I, I think I've got everything that I need uh, right here in front of me on this table. Yeah, you know what? That's pretty much all you need for me today. Feeling awesome right now and yeah, just gonna relax a little bit with mom and enjoy the evening. Mom's doing her crossword. Uh, are you doing a crossword right now? Uh, it's actually a cri crypto quick. Oh, a crypt, okay. Crypto quip. Crypto quip. Crypto quip? Yes. Crypto quip. Okay, crypto quip. So she's working on the crypto quip. Actually, mom put together a really nice meal. If you guys want a, an option, just like a, a really simple plant-based option, right? Mom, mom, tell me, what did you, here, let me bring the camera over. What was it that you, that you whipped up over here earlier it's today? basically cherry tomatoes, um, onion, Cherry tomatoes, onion, yeah. Garlic clove. Garlic clove, okay. And some oregano. And some oregano. With a little bit of olive oil. Yeah. Cooked down. Yeah. You can use it as a topping for a uh, vegetable or, or even like if somebody eats fish, they can put it on fish. Or you can use that as is. Right. Cool. Yeah. You can put it as a topping on a piece of bread, if people eat bread, whatever. Right, nice. It's oh. tasty and it's And it was, it was tasty? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Well, just take a whiff. You'll see, it smells very nice. Yeah, yeah, no, it does, yeah, it does smell good. It does smell really nice. Yeah, I've made it before. It's quite Oh, good. you have made it before, huh? Yeah. Yeah, really nice. Super simple cooked meal option. If you're having cooked food stuff, then yeah, this, my mom seemed to really, uh, really enjoy it. And you've had it before, you said, yeah? Yes, Yeah. Quite yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. Okie dokie. We'll sign off for now, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, guys, take care.